On Face to Face, we do the big interviews that you want to watch, the interviews that are no holds barred, and we ask the right questions and expect the right answers. We leave the two for you to judge if we did a good job and whether the answers were good. We encourage you to subscribe to the channel and share it as well and let the world know. Thank you for joining us on Face to Face. My guest on Face to Face is one of the few people to have been charged with treason uh, some years back. He is a 63-year-old father of 22. He is a member of parliament from Asin Dumping, that's his village, but he represents Asin Central, he used to represent Asin North. Now he wants to be flag bearer of the MPP and possibly president. The Honorable Kennedy Ohini Ejepon, you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Are you stressed on the campaign? I know you campaign, but you're just in a constituency. <coughs> now that you are doing national tour, is it too stressful or it's fine? Oh, it's fine. It's because fine. Uh, I've done it for a long time, We're campaigning for other presidential candidates and you know, also. So I'm fine with it. So far, it's good. Yeah. I see. You, you, don't, you don't look at it and be like, ah, me cry, why the tsunami, me baha And you don't ask yourself sometimes when you go through the rough terrain to do this oh. kind of we are all human beings. Sometimes it clicks. Now you begin to ask yourself questions. Why do I even have to do this? Especially when you see the number of businesses that I have and I don't have time to manage it now. Then it comes to mind. Such questions come up. Mm. People call you a maverick. Others say free your mind. I say you are the Donald Trump of this race. What do you call yourself? I call myself as the people's man. Uh, you see, when you talk of business and you say Donald Trump, I agree. But if you tell me in politics I'm like Donald Trump, I disagree. Why? I disagree because I've been in politics for about 30, 32 years. Donald Trump was a typical businessman and he decided to run to make a change, which I agree with him. <clears throat> But some of his policies were too harsh to ordinary citizens in the country. But when it comes to Kenya Japan, I always think of the ordinary people first and not the higher class. You know, in America, Republicans, we have something in economics called Reganometrics. Reganometrics, Reagan at his time wanted to build the high class, giving them good money to establish businesses. But they failed because when they empowered them with all these resources, they ended up going to holidays, expensive vacations and everything. So we call it regulometrics. Although MPP, we are aligned to Republicans. Naturally, I'm a Democrat. Oh, really? Yeah. So in your heart, you are a Democrat? Yes. By yes. your party? Why? What about Democrats do you like that you want to replicate in Ghana? See, Democrats, they always make policies that takes care of the ordinary people. And the Republicans, you know, sometimes their decisions are very tough and it does not favor the ordinary people in society. So you're not a conservative? <clears throat> I'm not. And I'm not a socialist. I'm liberal. You're liberal? Yes. Okay, so that's the difference. Yes. Because I was going to say then, why not with the National Democratic Congress no, I'm in not Ghana? I'm a socialist. <laughs> I'm liberal. I, you've always been... Have you... Do you have NPP in your family or you are the first person to really join the party? I'm the first person. What did your family think about you joining politics and for that matter, the blue? Well, you know, to tell you the truth, my father was in full support. My mother couldn't take it because of the insults and all those things. And to break the news to you, my mother died because of threats on me. <clears throat> uh, when Honorable Collins, Dada threatened, uh, his brother threatened to kill me. And I remember my mother died on the 13th of November. On the 10th, I visited her. And she was pleading with me to stop politics because they said they're going to kill me. And Kwame, you will kill me. Kwame, you will kill me. That was Thursday. I think Friday, I left for Kumasi. And Sunday afternoon, coming back to Accra, I got the bad news that my mother had died. 
God, she was saying, my heart, my heart, my heart, you'll kill me, you'll kill me. I'm sorry about that. If yeah. she were alive and seeing all your billboards and posters and your campaign in town, what would he say to you? Are you the first or last son or middle? I'm the first. First child. Yes. If he calls you, what would, he, what would she have said to you if she were alive? Well, she said, you're a hardcore guy, <laughs> you know, because she's giving me advice to stop and I didn't. I wanted to make a difference in society. And that day I was joking with them as, ah, if you say they are insulting me, I also insult them. They are also people's children. children. Mm -hmm. So why would you worry about these things? It's the nature of the game. So take heart. But she couldn't. It's good you mentioned insult because that's what I was going to and it's a good segue. When the name Kennedy Point is mentioned, acerbic comes to mind. He has an acerbic tongue. He insults. In fact, preparing for this interview, I decided to just do a quick Google search of, I just wrote Kennedy Japan insults, and the turnover was huge. I could read a number of, of, of headlines that popped up. And I'm wondering, how, how do you beha behave that way? You've insulted presidents, you've insulted chiefs, you've insulted journalists, you've insulted Ifias Nega, you've insulted members of parliament, you've insulted journalists. At least those are all the quotations. Some are in video, some are in text. As a child growing up, I was told not to insult people. You want to be president of the land. Culturally, do these insults stick with the personality you are seeking to be now? You know what? Let me tell you something. In Ghana here, the problem we have is they always misconstrue confidence to be arrogant. I'm a confident person and I speak my mind. In plain words, I'll tell you like this. But in Ghana, even when they're going to insult you, they say, oh, please, like, with all due respect to the Sebi, Sebi. Yeah, a and I can't, oh, Sebi, Sebi, Nipa, Chose, and all those things. And the result is the same. Sebi, what do you mean? Nipa, Chose, what do you Can a Japan come and say, what do you mean? What do you And they think because I didn't use the word Sebi or Nipa, Chose, it makes a difference. It doesn't make a difference. But is it good to insult? I reciprocate action. So you are a tit for tat person? Normally, yes. If you became president and someone insults you, you take the presidential convoy and go and insult them back, is that how you're going to behave? You see, when you are president, you are a leader for your country and you represent your country. You cannot be talking like that. And I'll ignore most of them. I'm not even going to comment. Of late, if you have watched whatever behavior I put up, there are a lot of insults here and there, but I just ignore them. But old habits die hard. If it's something that, and I'm a media person, and even before I started practicing journalism, when you sit on national agenda on Net2 in the past, and I've followed Net2, I've mm. followed Oman FM, and I, even your newspaper, the national agenda, right. I, think, I think it died later on. But, right. And when you go to a Doom FM and all these places, I remember when you were engaging the late Alaji Baturi, right. you insulted even his father and even sounded ethnocentric when he said, when you made your first one million or something like to that effect, his father was a watchman or something to that effect. Did you have to go down that low? Yes. Why? Why? Because you see, with all due respect to you, journalists, if Ghana is going to burn, is journalist because most of you don't speak the truth. Really? Yes. Read my lips. Explain. In the sense that at least it should have given me benefit of the doubt to ask, is this man mad to describe uh, Alaji Baturi as this, this, this and that? Nobody. All what he says. You see, I changed my attitude and began to reciprocate action because in this country, I was here for some time, and NDC insults people and they get away with murder. I said, how can we allow a group of people to insult people and get away with murder? The first time I reciprocated action was when uh, one NDC guy insulted President Kufo and said he's a dumb, he cannot even speak good English and all those things. All these words that he used for, for President Kufo, because he's an NDC, nobody said anything. What did Alaji Baturi say about my family before I said that? I mean, we have to be fair. 
And if I ask you the question, you cannot give me answer because, with all due respect to you, most of you are stereotype. And most of us, we consume information without digesting it. I was responding to the accusations by Elijah Baturi. But whatever he accused me of, nobody heard it. It is only Kenya Japan's response. That, I think, is not fair in this case. Are you a Christian? I am. I think the Bible said somewhere that let go and let God. Have you ever considered that? The Bible also says that you should crack the whip. So you are cracking the whip? Yeah, sometimes. Not Even all though the time. it would come out as, you said that when you are confident, they say you are arrogant. But it would come as, out as you are disrespectful, you are insulting. It, it doesn't bother you. It doesn't that, that's a tag it, that's put it on your head. It doesn't bother me because it's the truth. I speak the truth. Ghana here, a lot of people are afraid to speak the truth. And when you speak the truth, they say you're arrogant. They say you're insulting. You mentioned Efua Schwarzenegger. I never knew her until she went on PCFM to insult me. It was my colleague MP who told me that, ah, what have you done to Efua Schwarzenegger? I said, who is Efua Schwarzenegger? Then he retorted, ah, you don't even know her. I said, no. I said, Ish, go and ask for the tape. The way this woman was insulting you. So I took the tape and listen to what he said. And I had to go down to her level for also to let her feel the pain that every individual that he has insulted in this country also feels. Do you feel children who are watching you should reciprocate what you are doing? Should they learn that from you? What uh, You can learn everything from me because my good things outweighs the bad things you claim to be. In Parliament, the yeah. House had to reprimand you because for, for you insulted the, parliament for, for speaking the truth so you see for speaking the truth so what is called insult for you is speaking the truth yeah it's the truth ghana when you speak the truth they say you are insulting but you see you're a member of parliament where language is very very much and sensitive what, you see, and i i want you to do me a favor and quote at least some of the insults Oh, if I were to go on, uh, <laughs> some, some are horrible. I don't even want to know if I, whether they are correct or not, but I could read some of them for you. Yeah, read. I have um, taken the burden to take a screenshot of a number of them um, while, I, while I look for them. Parliament reprimanded you. They said that what you did was unparliamentary. Look at some headlines. Angry Kennedy Japan insults his workers for running adverts before his interview. That's one. Kennedy Japan angrily insults if you as nigger of arrest claims. Showers of insult. If Yashua Nega blazes her gun at Kenny Japan, IGP pardons Kenny Japan for insults. IGP. Ken, IGP, former Inspector General of Police, uh, Kudalo. Apparently, you had insulted him and said he was an asshole. You said this on TV. That's what has been quoted as you say. Kenny Japan pleads with judges after TV insults. You insulted a judge, a number of judges. It doesn't end there. There are several other problems. In fact, Ghana Web has a catalog. They describe it as a dossier. Kennedy Japan insults IGP. And they have a list of people you have insulted there. They put it up there for you. Then look at them. This is Ghana Web. I am out of insults. I'm a gentleman, Kennedy Japan. That sounded like you had repented. Who said that? This was you, December I haven't said 2016. They I said, haven't said they that. Said you said you would stop insulting. I haven't said that. Okay. Which means whatever you are seeing. You see, that's what I told you initially. Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> at least... They should have given me benefit of the doubt okay. to ask, why did this MP say this? All these things, they didn't bring it. What and did, all what? they said is insult, insult, insult. You journalists, most of you are not fair. Really? Yes. Can, you, you insulted Boabin Asamoa, and he says Boabin Asamoa reacts to Kenny Japan's insults at him. This was your former director of communication. Mm -hmm. Kenny Japan in hot waters, judge summons him over insults. Kenny Japan shows no mercy on baby mama, replies her insults and apology. Kenny Japan cautioned and discharged for insulting a judge. There's another headline, myinfo.com. Kenny Japan insults Sami Dakun, a lawyer, in court, and judge had to intervene. And it continues you just see, by googling I'm insults. telling you, you are all biased. How? Bias did you not say these things? What, did, what did Sami Daku say in court? What did Please. he say? You see, I'm trying to be nice, but I know you are an intelligent journalist. I expect you also to probe into it. Mm -hmm. What did Sami Daku say in court? What did he say, sir? Uh, you don't know, but you are quoting The him. publications from the reporters uh, but I'm sorry. in the court. I'm sorry, I'll yeah. tell you the truth. Yeah. That you also have the same problem. Okay. Because 
You did not even ask what Samir Daku said, and I replied them. Okay. All you are quoting is what, oh, they said he insulted Samir mm -hmm. Daku. Mm -hmm. That boy, I can, he can be my child. Do you know what he said, the description he gave me? In I want court. you to go and find out. Okay, but you see, the issue is that because the judge had to intervene, as a journalist, I appeal to authority in my reportage. If the judge asked you to withdraw, it means that what you said was unprintable. But the judge did not ask him to withdraw. Usually when the judge sees... No, I'm an, saying that. Mm, I'm asking you, yeah. my brother. I want to prove something to you. Right. How journalists, some of you are so unfair. Mm -hmm. And you only consume information. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they are just diabolic. They're going to burn this country. Because the actual things that prevail, they will never say it. They will just pick an issue. Then just spread it. And nobody will probe into that statement. Then they will come out with their conclusion. That is not fair to me. When you attack journalists, you own a media empire. Yeah, so that is, that they, is are why... Are also unprofessional? That is why I'm fair. <laughs> let me give you one example. Yeah. Why I sacked Justice Anand. Mm -hmm. Justice Anand insulted Vice President. Justice Anand was biased to a man who was an adjudicator for Mr. Premper, the former director controller general he died in his estate one mr boateng has to wait you know this gentleman did not even call mr boateng for his side of the story he made series of publications against this man mm -hmm. when we had this election at the stadium i know the man i went there to greet him the way the man behaved he embarrassed me i saw what and he won't listen to me. Oh, yeah, you did it. I'm saying, I don't even know what you are talking about. Later on, I went to find out from uh, Oman FM and Netu that they had even taken the matter to court. Media Commission has asked Justice Sanan to apologize to the man, and he refused. According to the man, somebody at my media station told him that I am the one behind it for for Justice Anand to destroy him, which I didn't even know about it. It was not true. No, I did not even know about it. So I realized, Ish, no, I can lose good friends. Although I'm contesting the vice president, I will not stand anywhere and insult him. Whether I like it or not, he's a vice president. You campaign for him. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the trend, there's nowhere I have insulted the vice president. Again, this noble man that really likes me, I like him. His daughter's wedding, I was there. Only for him to embarrass me. So I decided to verify. And when I verified, they gave me the report from media commission. So I said, mm -mm, this thing can go on. You see, he destroyed the man and he was so hurt. This is the problem I have. So if the person is working for me and he's not doing the right thing, and I'm not able to check him. How would I have the courage even to say something to you if you also do something wrong? Mm, mm. So I see, I think we have to be fair to everybody. But, but the approach you use, you don't think that sometimes you let your emotions take the better side of your judgment? Does that not... Well, what, what approach is that? The approach that... I mean, yeah, you see, let me tell you. In, in, in Parliament, just a second, in Parliament, mm. when you say the least word, the Speaker would ask you to withdraw. They say it's unparliamentary, yeah. which means that you, Parliament is a house of decorum. We, we watch you in the well, we uh -huh. see how you put speak. The least word you use against your colleague, even if it's a gesture, recently the Speaker had to ask your colleague to withdraw. Do you not think that you should replicate that also on the public scene so that we make progress and have decency? Or decorum? You see, you see, you use the word decency and decorum. Is decency applies to everybody or it applies to a section or a group of people in this country and other groups are not? You know, so we have to be careful. I tell you, I always reciprocate action. And before I come out, you would have done it for several times that I don't even say anything. So one day, when I come out, the public, the society, everywhere, because it's Kenya Japan, they have a news. That, I think, is not fair. Okay. If we really want to develop this country, 
we should all build this. Have confidence, bold, honest, sincere, disciplined, and change this country. But a situation where when you respond to somebody's allegation, somebody's insult, and they ignore what was the, said against what you. was said against you and reprimand you for what you have said, I think it's wrong. This is face to face on CDTV. My guest is Honorable Kennedy Japon. He wants to be flag bearer of the new patriotic party. When we come back, I'll ask him about the economy. The man at the second position in the government now is an economist. He was celebrated by the NPP and introduced to us. We have seen what is happening to the economy. We have the men, is what the MPP said. Things are not looking that good. What is he going to do differently? He is not an economist. How can he succeed where the big economists failed? Stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Find us on channel 363. On Go TV, we're on channel 117. And on HD Plus, get us on channel 108. On a digital TV, run a new search. But take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV. City TV can be accessed on any free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and HD Plus boxes. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Rusanda Amadou. My guest is Honorable Kennedy Japon, flag bearer hopeful of the new patriotic party. Your party, and I remember you vividly at Manchagbona when you, you introduced this whole Woyomes problem. In fact, Woyomes problem was started by you at Manchagbona right. when you, you quoted what the Auditor General reported. It became a song, Woyomes, Woyomes, all of that. You didn't win 2012, but eventually you managed to tag the uh, Mahama government as corrupt. The government you are in now, or the party that is formed the government, is a party you belong to. You are campaigning against corruption. The president who leads this government has been tagged by no less a person than the man he appointed as special prosecutor, Martin Amidu. Martin Amidu described the president as a mother serpent of corruption. You are in this party and in this government. What do you make of the Akufado government's fight against corruption? Uh, to be frank with you, Whatever we said during the campaign, we've not been able to do it, fighting corruption. But I'll give him benefit of the doubt because there are so many cases <clears throat> that have gone to court and manipulations and maliciousness and whatever, none of them. They've not even completed about five of them. So Ghanaians are impatient. And because of that, people are doing things with impunity. But when we are blaming the president, you should blame the judiciary too. How? Because of delays. Because of delays. The Attorney General succeeded in daily prosecutions for your colleague from Asin North. If the government is committed and the president himself is committed, they would have gotten these cases to run, don't you think? Well, you know, uh, let me take, give you this example. Opuni. Mm -hmm. Opuni. Cocoa board. Yeah, cocoa board. Right from 2017, we're in 2023. How many years now? Six. Right. Nothing has been done. But even the reference you just made, you see, when the president also made a mistake to comment on what ever he preempted. Mm the judgment. You see how people also lashed them. So we allowed the judiciary to work and everything. I agree with you that the Attorney General is suspecting it. It doesn't mean the judge. Attorney General can push the judge to take a decision mm -hmm. and say that within two days he should give judgment. No. I am not condoning to anything, but what I'm saying is judiciary is part of the problem. The government is also part of the problem. So you cannot accuse only the government. At least he has set example of, you know, sending cases to the court 
And I've given you one example where six years nothing has been done. Mm. But you knew this and yet you attacked John Muhammad. At least he has jailed, and I'm not using him being the one who jailed, but jailed some of his officers when he was in office. You haven't done that. In yeah. fact, your president has been, and I'm using your president here to mean the MPP led, but I mean he's our president, has been described as a clearing agency. I'm sure you have seen that and heard that. It means that he's not interested in fighting corruption. And for his special prosecutor to say he was mother serpent of corruption, that means he's the, the hen that sits on the eggs of corruption in this country. That's a problem. For a party that told us you are coming to remove corrupt Muhammad and all his people and fix Ghana, we are not seeing that. You see, the problem here is that before this, whatever we said, I think we made a mistake by not changing the mindset and conscientizing Ghanaians. Because if you want to fight corruption in this country, whatever decision that you are coming out, Ghanaians should be your partners. Partners in the sense that you should educate Ghanaians to let them know that this has gone wrong and we have to correct it. If we don't, it is not good for our country. It is not good for development. If not, even we politicians, especially our accused the parliament, parliament, we take entrenched position. If it's MPP, you see all MPP members of parliament supporting. If it is NDC, you see NDC members of parliament supporting. When it happens like that, it makes it difficult to fight corruption. You know very well that what this individual has done is not good for the country. He's been taken to court. He has not even been jailed. And right there, you see interference. That is a problem. It's part of it. So I think if you really want to fight corruption, I will tell you that those who say that, oh, this man is corrupt, this woman is corrupt, naturally, almost everybody in this country, we are all corrupt. You know why? Because right from our inception, when we were born, our culture alone, the children, what they see at home, it becomes an imprint in the brain. And they think they are doing the right thing. It is only few that come out and realize mm, what my parents were doing. It's not was, right. Yeah, it was not right for the country. So when we are talking of corruption, we are all corrupt. Okay. So for us to change Ghana and eliminate or reduce, I would say reduce, because everywhere in the world, some people are corrupt. They avoid taxes and all those things. So I think to reduce corruption in this country, we have to educate every Ghanaian. Every Ghanaian should be a partner to the government mm -hmm. so that we begin to teach them, advise them, and let them know that even if you go to work and you're supposed to start at 8 and you go at 10, it's against uh, the normal time that we have to go. So that's also corruption. Yeah. Corruption of morals and all of right, that. Right. All those things. So I, I googled your name and added corruption. Lots of headlines. I'm just going to read two for you. The first one says, Can a Japan vows to commit suicide if Mahama is not jailed? This is Ibrahim Mahama. This was 2017. Speaking on Adum TV, Maverick politician said, quote, I will take in poison and kill myself if Ibrahim Mahama is not jailed, unquote. He should watch and hear me well. I will take in poison and die if Ibrahim is not jailed. This was because you thought he was corrupt. Six years old. And old, he is corrupt. But he has not gone to jail. I, Six years old. No, let me tell you. Mm. You see why I blame the judges and everything? Ibrahim Mahama, okay, was clearing all his machines without paying taxes and uh, duties. That's and, an allegation. Ah, I took him, I took him on, and he went and paid 14 million. You didn't hear a good journalist like <laughs> you. You didn't hear. I did. That's where I have a problem. Mm. If you did, indeed, you would not even make this statement. But so that is what. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the culture. What I talk about culture. Some big chiefs, some big politicians were begging on his behalf. Mm -hmm. And now he gets the moral right even to make such a statement. Do you not think you gave him the chance? Because if you tagged him as corrupt... And but not, he's corrupt. I've given you one example saying, where so, he didn't so pay the duties. If you tagged him as corrupt, now you come 
and your record isn't that better. It means you gave him the, the moral high ground to make the comment against How? you. And <coughs> Have, have I been charged of corruption? Not yet. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not me, personally. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's another <clears throat> story. I have corruption evidence that can destroy MPP, Kennedy Japan. This was one year ago. You are condoning and using corruption as a blackmail too? You my, want to be My brother, mm -hmm. I have a problem. Mm -hmm. With all due respect. Yes. Sometimes, the words you journalists use, I've told you mm -hmm. earlier on that, if Ghana is going to burn, it will come from journalists and because of misreporting. Because of misreporting. But there's a quote here. Let me read what it for you and tell me if you didn't say this. Claiming that the MPP's director of communication, Mr. Yabobia Samoa, has been speaking disparagingly about him, Kennedy Japan warned that, quote, if NPP folks dare me, I swear God, I will release an Anas video, unquote, he filmed in three. You didn't say this. Uh, and you see, the last video I'm talking about, you see when he released just a portion of it, the Minister of Finance was sacked. So it means you have evidence that there's corruption in the government and you are sitting on it. You didn't I go have, to OSB? I went, I took it to court. That is why I uh, announced to the, 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 the judge found him guilty. Okay, my, my Because mm -hmm. you know what? Mm -hmm. I gave the evidence to him to prove. Mm -hmm. This Anas example, honestly, is entrapment. It doesn't mean because the way he entrapped those people, they made a mistake. When you, if I show you the videos, they are mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. If I show you, you see that he entrapped them. But I was saying that if I should come out and show all these videos without even giving you background of it, because we all consume information, the way they see it, they will think that MPP is corrupt and it will collapse the government. So it's not as if the government was corrupt, you have the filler, but you are keeping it under your pillow. That's not what it means. I was not keeping it under my pillow because I presented it to the court. So okay. how would you say that? Very well. The moment you take it to court, it's public. And then it goes for it. <laughs> right. The president you campaigned for, he right. extolled, he extolled Anas's virtues and said he was going to use the Anas model in his fight against corruption. Yeah. Yet you don't agree with Anas. Uh, let me tell you something. Mm. Today, mm -hmm. I want you to go and interview President Kufuado, and if you make that statement again. He has, he, you think he has recanted? Of course, yes, because I've given enough evidence. And I know for sure, after watching the video where he sacked Edouard, I know he has regretted. Because they all saw the video and it was completely entrapment. You see? So those like so you don't Obama... So you agree with that principle? No, so Obama came here. And all of us were believing in Anas because of the way. But when I started criticizing his modus operandi, and videos started coming, to, I have a lot of videos on Anas, evidence. Then I realized it was, com and you know, it was complete entrapment. Mm. Not that the people were. Okay. Corrupt. So you had an opposing view to what many people hold the and view I of Anas. And to the whole okay. country. Now. Ahmed Swali right. is dead. Right. It's an albatross around your neck ah. because of what you said publicly what, what on did, TV. What did I say? Oh, you said that if they see him, they should beat him. I have a quotation. Yes. And because NDC has said that uh, in 2024, all they need is a DJ to be playing back sound bites of MPP people. They don't have to say anything. And well, also I can to... defend everything. Okay. And MPP, I will also play if I win mm -hmm. as a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. I'll bring all their corruption. Okay. So this is what you said about Ahmed. Uh -huh. You showed his video and said, this Ahmed, you all know he lives in Medina. When you see him, beat him. You see, did Ahmed, you, did you say I have that? a problem with you journalists. Okay. And you are going to burn this country. Mm -hmm. You he see said, that you number said this on your neck too, Hold TV. on, hold mm -hmm. on. That's where I took you, you from. You see, <laughs> I've said this several times. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what transpired. Mm -hmm. I showed the video of Ahmed Swale. Mm -hmm. And when they saw it, my workers came to me and said, Ah, Honorable, don't you know this guy? You even gave him 1500 to go and pay his school fees, which I always do for people, so I don't even remember. Then I said to them, Then you have to be careful. If this guy comes here, beat him up. 
because he's going to set this company up. Was I said, was when I, he what comes, what to say? Yes, beat yes. like physical up, up, yes. beat him. Yes, uh, not that you don't regret that. No, 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 not that I want to be president, and therefore I will come and tell you I didn't say that. No, I said if he comes to my premises, I didn't say go and beat him outside. No, okay. I said they said, oh, he has been coming here. I said no. Based on the evidence I had, you know, Ahmed Swale's problem, may he so rest in peace. He made a lot of mistakes. You know why? <clears throat> All the investigations Anas did, Anas never showed up with his face. Ahmed Swale showed his face. So all the people that he embarrassed in this country, Anas embarrassed in this country, it was Ahmed Swale who set them up. Ahmed Swale was the one who set the finance minister and those finance people up with some renowned lawyer. They never saw Anas's face. So if I say that this is the guy, and let me tell you the truth today, I cannot, this cannot be an albatross of me. Let me tell you something. When I showed the face of Ames Wali, the finance minister was on his way to Dubai to meet them. So, the Minister Kenofo of State, Yata. yes, mm -hmm. Minister of State, Edubwahi, called him and said, Esh, I have seen this on the two. This is entrapment. He actually met them and he snubbed them. He snubbed them. They didn't know it was Anas until I showed the face and connected Ameswale to Anas. So how on earth would you say that, I say, if he comes to my premises, beat him up because he's going to set us up. And okay. look, look at the way he was rising in this country. And it was not Anas. It was Ameswale who destroyed Kwasi Nyantechi. Because Anas, he never met him until Kwasi Nyantechi, he went to Dubai with the Liberian president thinking they will get money because of the way Ameswale was talking. He disappointed them. So when Kwasi Nyantechi came back to Ghana, he threatened to sue Ameswale. That is when Anas owned up that, oh, he's sorry, he was the one who did this and that. And they went there the second time. And he disgraced them. Let's move away from corruption. Let's talk about the economy. It was a big deal. Um, NPP said to us that you had the men You've been in power for six years. You have said your money that you had has been devalued under your own government. These are top economies. And I remember Dr. Baumia mentioning the list of men that you have who have economic background. All these guys are around the table and things have gone south. You are not an economist. What can you do differently or what would you do differently? I would do things differently because I'm pragmatic. I believe in physical things, things that I've seen that can develop this country. I'm not a theorist. Most of them are theorists. They come, they propound theories, and it never works. If there is a change in the world economy, then they begin to have problems. I'll give you an example how I'm going to change this economy. I mean, from your name, I can tell that you are from the north. Look, the five northern regions, the arable lands that we have there, <coughs> water region, Afram Plains and Accra Plains. When we go into agro processing with mechanized farming, my brother, we'll be able to change the fortunes of this country. For, for instance, about two weeks ago, African leaders went to Russian summit and embarrassed themselves by asking Russia for greens. With all these arable lands we have in Africa, our leaders cannot go into mechanized farming, processing, and we are always begging for food. But we said planting for food and jobs. So what went wrong with that? Let me tell you something. Planting for food. One day, I met a group of agriculturists and all those things. And I gave them an example. Why I'm saying I'm pragmatic. I gave them an example that when you are going to Tema, you cross the toll boot, look on your right. I would say illegal because the land doesn't belong to them. But they are using Ghana water. They piped it and small irrigation. To go, grow lettuce. Yeah, go and see the yield over there. It's beautiful. 
good. So why can't we irrigate most of our lands? And that day, I was so disappointed. The answer was that irrigation is too expensive. I said, oh, gee. And you see, you talk of irrigation being too expensive in terms of short run. But long run, it is cheaper. Because when you go to South Africa, they grow maize 365 days. If you want corn, you will get it. But here is seasonal. Because they irrigate the lands. At least these Ashama guys, when you are coming from Tema to Accra, when you go past Ashama on come to right. 24 on your right, maize up to now, you see it. Because they use that small dirty river or gutter mm, over there. Mm. And we can I, replicate this in right, the country. That is the example I gave them. Mm. And they didn't accept it. But the people who are in charge of our agriculture sector, and I'm referring to the civil servant, will be the same people in the Kennedy Japan government. Kennedy Japan will fire you. Discipline in this country. Let me give you one example. Why, if you make a mistake, we have to fire you. One, I have a problem with people who think they have served for so many years, unproductive hours, unproductive days, unproductive years, and they, still, they think they need promotion. They are due. They have to. I am going to base promotion in this country on performance. It's good you talk about firing. President Akufado has been accused of being lenient too much to I, his I wanted to Okay, land, please. I wanted to land. Mm. So, because of... I'll give you one example. Why I have decided to contest as a presidential candidate mm -hmm. or flag bearer is that as far back as uh, Honorable Kwashige's time, I did experiment on two products. One, yam. I took yam to Holland, a company called Grasso. They did the experiment and we can store yam for eight months. I fish. I also educated them that fish, June, July, August, we throw fish back into the sea. We need blast freeze machines before the coast or along the coast so that we can blast freeze the, the catch at four, minus 41 degrees for 24 hours. Then you move it from the blast freeze room to the coast or minus 10 to 12 percent and it meets international standard that we, have, we can export. My brother, they didn't listen to me. So the technical guys, if I tell you, first of all, I will expose them to the way they do things in terms of agriculture. Exposing them mean will give them opportunity to go and train elsewhere. I believe in India and China. You are looking east. You don't look west. No, I will use Asia Miracle to develop this country. So when we have gone round, my first 100 days, apart from conscientizing Guineans or changing the mindset, everybody, anybody that I appoint as a minister, I'm going to use uh, Plato's ideal word. Put them in a room, bring experts to educate them and show them the way to do things differently from what we are doing. So while you are given all this opportunity and you still go back to what you, you are used to and it's not productive, I'm afraid, we have to let you go. If you were President Kufado today, who would you fire in his government? I don't know. You don't want to, you don't want to pass a judgment on any of them? Uh, yeah, because uh, sometimes it's allegations. And I wouldn't say this man or this, that, because... I've been accused of saying so many things. That you don't, which, <laughs> you don't want to hang people? No, yeah, which I did not know, which like, I did not even see. Yeah. And the headlines... I've misled you. Yeah. There's another headline I'm going to quote, but that will be after this break. No, Kennedy yeah. Yepon has said that, forget 2024 if you go to IMF. NPP is at IMF now. Should we forget 2024? Please stay with us. This face to face. City TV is live on DSTV. Find us on channel 363.
On GoTV, we're on channel 117. And on HD+, Plus, get us on channel 108. On a digital TV, run a new search. But take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV. City TV can be accessed on any free-to-air digital box like the GoTV and HD Plus boxes. City TV, it's your world. You're welcome back. This is uh, Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandamadu. Dr. Baumia says it is possible. Alan Kodi Tremantin says a drone is so. Uh, Kenny Japon says it's Ken's hour. There are 10 of you on the field. Why do you think you should emerge victorious? But I thought you said we were going to IMF first. Oh, IMF is at the end because whoever comes out, IMF is going to be an albatross around okay. your neck. So, yeah. You know, <clears throat> I will be different and I have an advantage over the rest because everybody says leadership by example the situation we are in now the unemployment rate is so high in this country that i feel we have to create job opportunities for the youth that is the only way we can move this country again i believe in one thing this is just a seen dumping LA middle school economics. Not some big one before no, anywhere. No, this big, big English and a, just a roadside economics. Yes, simple. Mm -hmm. My policy on taxes will be reduce and expand. What I mean by reduce is that taxes in Ghana here are so high, but only few people are paying taxes. A lot of people don't pay tax. And if I say reduce, I use hotels in this country as an example. There are 17 different taxes on a hotel. I was in Dubai last week and three rooms with my family were, were six, three rooms. It was 1,500 dirhams a day, which means each room was $140 with breakfast. Look, that same room in Ghana here will be about 500. How? So if I decide to go on vacation, these two countries where I can get a hotel room with breakfast for $140 and a, a country, a hotel room with breakfast for $400, which one would you choose? The cheaper one, of course. Case closed. Mm. So for us to build tourism in this country, all these things will come to play. So, why I'm different from all the candidates? Before you go to that, Professor Mills was a tax man or a revenue authority guy before he became president. They've talked so many times about widening the tax net and it did not end anywhere. This government has said you're going to move from taxation to production. Nothing has happened. You are sure that you, who is not educated in taxing, can be the guy who fixes that problem? See, I keep telling you theory, theory. I'm a pragmatic person. I have experience more than, with all due respect to Professor Mills, because he's bookish. I'm sorry to use that word. I, Ken Japan, I'm a politician and a businessman. Let me show you the difference between me and Mills, who was a taxi. I am fortunate to employ educated people, uneducated people, and the artisans. And I can tell you, artisans make more money than some of the educated people. I'll give you one example. A mason at my construction site in Tema makes 150 Ghana CDs a day. In 26 days, he makes almost 4,000 CDs. Graduates at Oman FM and Kent City, just as you said, that we don't pay journalists well, make between 2,000, 3,000, and they pay tax. The mason who makes 4,000 CDs doesn't not pay tax. tax. A contractor, he says I shouldn't use him. He came to beg my wife, saying that, oh, my boss is always mentioning me. I've not mentioned his name, but he feels guilty. You see, there should be a system where I'll be able to check that the guy that I'm paying this amount also pays tax. Mm. I always argue with him, I want to deduct tax from him, but there's no means because he's not 
registered. Mm. So the means that have been produced is a digitalization agenda, championed and led by Dr. Mahmoud Obaumia. Mm -hmm. Many people in your government hold the view that he is a guy who laid that foundation for the digital economy. Let him be there. Why do you want to contest him and other people who I, are in the I wanted to finish my explanation. Go ahead. You see, I'm talking about taxes. They reduce and expand. Mm -hmm. If we don't do respect, you let me finish. Please and go ahead. Me. A contractor charges me $11.8 million for foundations to fix my steel plant machines. His labor charge out of the 11.8 was 2.4 million. All these 2.4 million goes to this guy and his workers. No tax. Because I don't have the means to take tax from them. So when I, Kenya Japan, is given the opportunity, every artisan, everybody working in this country will have to register and have a license and a PIN number so that we can tax them. Then, when we have widened the net like this, we'll be able to reduce that, especially the port. Port, now port, customs, they are all suffering because men, a lot of traders or importers have stopped because of high tariffs. And they are high because it's direct tax. They are able to assess that more than this indirect tax where you have to go through so many channels before you get it. That is where uh, Vice President digitization will come in. So we have to lay the foundation first. Digitization doesn't mean you should go and have a license. You should have the license first before you digitize the person. You have to get a social security number or a PIN number or tax ID before you digitize it. Okay. So we have to lay the foundation. Conscientization of Ghanaians that everybody, no matter how small your money is, you have to pay a little. When you go to Cote d'Ivoire, shoe shine. The guys doing the shoe shine, they even pay tax, but they give them flat rate. See, it's so sad that only 600 large companies in the whole country that are paying light taxes. And I'll give you one example. Why I'm different from other candidates is that I'm, I'm well versed in business. I can give you a number of examples. Just recently, I was fighting with Ghana Revenue Authority because my coastal, I have registered VAT for VAT. And because of the VAT, my fish is more expensive than the Lebanese next door to me, who has not registered to pay VAT. And you see a fleet of trucks, although his coastal is smaller than mine, mine will be about 10 times or 14 times than uh, his. But the volumes count. So if you look at the size of the coastal and say you are not going to pay VAT, you are doing a disservice to this nation. Okay. The VAT should be based on volumes. Okay. Whatever he, he sells, he pays VAT on okay. it. Honorable, the 10 of you who are contesting, anyone who emerges the winner would have to sell the NPP's campaign yeah. in election 2024. I want you to speak to NPP delegates who are disgruntled, and I'm referring to the base of the party, disgruntled about the state of affairs, not even NDC and other people. What would you say to them Considering that the things you said you will not do, you will not go to IMF, you have gone. What are you going to say to them to motivate your base, first of all, before you even appeal to the yeah, nation? I'm going to tell them that they should give Kenya Japan opportunity to create employment for them. In life, the only thing that will make you survive is when you are working. And look, we have a lot of tourist sites in this country undeveloped, untapped. That will not take more than six months. Tourism. I'll use tourism to boost this economy. First, for example, when a uh, president declared the year of return, from October to January 2019 or so, tourism made about $1.4 billion. Call it three months. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine if we have developed the tourist sites, this castle, Osu Castle, I will move everybody from there and give them different office, the heritage. 
and I will develop Osu Castle in such a way that the, it will attract a, a lot of tourists because I'm going to buy ships and put it there. We'll write point, uh, point of no return. When you go through the tunnel, you enter the ship. You enter the ship. In the ship, there will be live band music, food, restaurant, whatever drinks you want. And you ride from Osu all the way to Winneba and back. The ticket that you buy gives you food and a drink. So during the entertainment, the live band and everything, we have beautiful women dancing and you get carried away. You may, you marry, you may marry an extra wife. <laughs> well, if you choose to. Now, you don't know what I am going to do. So I will not advise you. <laughs> you advise you will advise polygamy, would you? Yeah, yeah, I will advise you. <laughs> Kafra, why? So, <clears throat> by the time you come back, you would have spent more money. Mm. We have to go, but how would you explain the, the IMF U10 to your party people? The IMF, I've given you answer to the IMF based on my principles. D domesticate. Tourism, agri and mechanization and agro processing, IT, which I call technology and engineering. These four areas will change Ghana for good, especially tourism and agro processing. But you owe Ghanaians an apology? No. You don't? No. About what? For the promises you made that you have failed to deliver. Who made the promise? Me, the MPP, not, not me, so the Canadian Party. So um, I, I didn't make any promise because as an individual, I have given a lot of suggestions that they did not take. Like the example I gave you that we have to do irrigation mm. and they didn't mind it. President Kufour's time when I was advising Minister of Agri to, you know, have warehouses that were blowers can store yam for eight months, telling them to build blast freeze machines so that our fish that we catch we can export they didn't listen to me so who blame me for that we have to go now but there is a rumor out there that afro kennedy oh, he's just doing this later on he's going to throw his support again behind somebody and that he's just doing this to scuttle the race i wanted to look at the camera and say on authority that you're running this race to the end and that you're not just doing some experiments because the numbers are looking good for you in terms of the polls you see are you in to support someone or you are going to the end my brother mm. you know election is expensive mm -hmm. if you know how much i've spent you know those who are sitting back there thinking Kenya japan is doing it for somebody i'm afraid they have to change their mind and again the policies that i have None of them <clears throat> going around has been able to tell the delegates in Ghana what they are going to do for the country. So I stand out. Look, four days ago, this weekend, Sunday or so, I got 17 lecturers from Legon who said, they came to me, a golden to, uh, moving peak here, and said that they are all lecturers, but they believe and accept that they are theorists. And they buy into the pragmatism policy that I have been talking about. And therefore, they want to be part of it. 17 lecturers on Sunday, they were here. That alone tells you something. So I'm in for good. We wish you all the best and thank you for speaking to us, sir. You're welcome and thank you for giving me the opportunity. That's honorable Kennedy. I hope I've been able to clear you some have, of the You have told your story, and, and that's essentially what we sought to do out, to let you speak to the issues that have been raised against you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We hope to speak to you again. Maybe, you, 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 what number do you hope to be at the top, in the top five? I know you want to be in the top five, but which position? You want me number one, number two, number three? Number one. You think you can beat the two of them? Why Alan not? and Ken. Why not? Everything is Al possible. Alan and uh, Baumia. Everything is possible. You're confident you'll be sworn in as president? Yes. What would be the first thing you do as president if you're elected in 2025? Changing the mindset. What I'll do is, and I've started, it's good you came up with this question. We are signing out. I just wondered one thing you'll do. I'll bring all musicians together to let them come up with heroic songs and we'll organize a concert like We Are The World. R&B, Hard Lives, reggae, gospel, they all come together and play all these songs. Then after that, we'll give it to the media and schools to play for Ghanaians to be patriotic, honest, and disciplined.
Thank you so much for speaking to us. That's the Honorable Kennedy Ejepong. He wants to be flag bearer of the new patriotic party. This has been face to face. My name is Umaru Sandamado. Thank you. Keep watching City TV. It's your world.